I've been in Afghanistan for uh, 21 years. I work for the Red Cross and uh, um, I'm a physiotherapist. My job is to make uh, arms and legs. Well, it's not completely true. We do more than that. We provide uh, the, the patients, uh, the Afghan disabled, first with uh, physical rehabilitation, then with uh, social reintegration. It's a very logical plan. But it was not always like this. For many years, we were just providing them with artificial limbs. It took quite many years before the program, for the program to become what it is now. Today, I would like to, um, to tell you a story, the story of a big change, and the story of the people who made this change possible. I arrived in Afghanistan in uh, 1990. Um, to work in a hospital for uh, war victims, and then not only for war victims, but it was for any kind of patient. I was also working in the, the orthopedic center. We call it like this, is the place where we make the legs. At that time, I found myself in a, in a strange situation. I, I felt quite not ready for that job. There was so much to learn. Uh, there were so many things new to me, but it was a terrific job. But as soon as the fight intensified, the physical rehabilitation was suspended. There were many other things to do. So the orthopedic center was closed because physical rehabilitation was not considered a priority. Um, it, was, it was a strange sensation. Anyway. You know, every time I, I make this speech, it's not the first time, but it's, it's an emotion, it's something that comes, comes out from the past. It's, it's 21 years, but they are still all there. Anyway, in uh, 1992, the Mujahideen took all Afghanistan, and uh, the orthopedic center was closed. I was uh, assigned to, to work for the homeless, for the internally displaced people. But one day, something happened. I was uh, coming back from a big food distribution in a mosque where thousands, where tens and tens of people were squatting in terrible condition. I wanted to go home, I was driving, and uh, you know, when you, you want to forget, you don't want to see things, you, you just want to, to go to your room to lock yourself inside and, and say, that's enough. A bomb fell not far from my car. Well, far enough, but big noise. And, and uh, everybody disappeared from the street. The cars disappeared as well. I, I ducked. And uh, only one figure remained in the middle of the, of the road. It was a man on a wheelchair, desperately trying to, to move away. Well, I'm not a particularly brave person, I have to confess it, but but, but uh, I could not just ignore him, so I stopped the car and I, I, I went to help. The man was uh, without legs and only with, without, with one arm. Behind him there was a child, his son, red in the face, in the effort to, to push the father. So I took him to a safe place and... Uh, and uh, I ask, uh, what are you doing out in the street in this, in this situation? I work, he said. I wonder what work. And then I ask an uh, even more stupid question. Why you don't have the prosthesis? Why don't you don't have the artificial legs? And he said, the Red Cross has closed. Well, without thinking, I told him, come tomorrow, we will provide you with a pair of legs. The man, his name was uh, Mahmoud, and the child's name was uh, Rafi, left. And then I said, oh my God, what did I say? Um, the center is closed, no staff around, maybe the machinery uh, broken. 
who is going to make the legs for him? So I hoped that he, he, would, not, he would not come. This is the streets of Kabul in those days. So I, I, I said, well, I will give him some money. And uh, so the following day, I went to the orthopedic center. And uh, I spoke with the gatekeeper. I was ready to tell him, listen, if someone such and such comes tomorrow, comes, please tell him that it was a mistake. Nothing can be done. Give him some money. And, uh, but Mahmoud and his son were already there. And they were not alone. There were 15 maybe 20 people like him, <laughs> waiting. And there was some stuff too. Uh, among them there was uh, my right-hand man, Najmuddin. And the, the gatekeeper told me, they come every day to see if the center would open. Well, I said, no, we have, to, we have to go away, we cannot stay here. They were bombing, not very close, but you could hear the noise of the bomb, so we cannot stay here, it's dangerous. It's not a priority. But Najmuddin told me, listen, now we are here. At least we can start repairing the prosthesis, the broken prosthesis of the people, and maybe try to do something for people like Mahmoud. Oh, no, I said, no, please, we, don't, we cannot do that. It's, it's, it's really it's dangerous. We have other things to do, but they insisted. When you have 20 people in front of you looking at you, and you are the, the one who has to decide, so we started doing some repairs. Also, one of the physiotherapists reported that uh, uh, Mahmoud could be provided with leg, but not immediately. Uh, the legs were uh, swollen and uh, the knees were stiff, so he needed a long preparation. Believe me, I was worried because I was breaking the rules, I was doing something that I was not supposed to do. In the evening, I went to, to speak with the bosses at the headquarters, and I told them, I lied. I told them, listen, we are going to start a couple of hours per day, just a few repairs. Maybe some of them is here now. <laughs> uh, so we, 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 we started. Uh, I was working. I was going every day to work in the, for the homeless and Najmuddin was staying there, doing everything, and reporting on the patient. He was telling me, patients are coming. Well, we knew that uh, many more patients could not come, prevented by the fight, but people were coming. And Mahmoud was coming every day. And slowly, slowly, week after week, uh, his legs were improving, the stump were cast, prosthesis made, and he was starting the real physical rehabilitation. He was coming every day, crossing the front line. A couple of times I crossed the front line in the very place where Mahmoud and his son were crossing. I tell you, it was something so sinister that I was astonished he could do it every day. But finally, the grey day arrived. Mahmoud was going to be discharged with his new legs. It was April, I remember. A very beautiful day, April in Kabul is beautiful, full of roses, full of flowers. We could not stay possibly indoors with all these sandbags at the windows, very sad, dark. So we chose a small spot in the garden and uh, Mahmoud put on his prosthesis, the other patients did the same and they started uh, practicing for the last time before being discharged. Suddenly, they started fighting. Two groups of Mujahideen started fighting. We could hear on, in, in, on the air, in the air, the, the bullet passing. So we dashed, all of us, towards the, the shelter. Uh, Mahmoud grabbed his son, I grabbed someone else, everybody was grabbing something, and then we, 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 we ran. You know, 50 meters can be a long distance if you are totally exposed, but we managed to reach the shelter. Inside, all of us panting, we sat a moment, and I heard Rafi telling his father, Father, you can run faster than me. <laughs> and Mahmoud, of course I can. I can run, and now you can go to school. No need of staying with me all the day pushing my wheelchair. Later on, we took them home, 
And I will never forget Mahmoud and his son walking together, pushing the empty wheelchair. And then I understood. Physical rehabilitation is a priority. Dignity cannot wait for better times. Well, I met uh, from that day on, we never closed a single day. Well, sometimes we suspended for a few hours, but we never, we never closed it again. I met Mahmoud one year later. He was in good shape, um, a bit thinner. He needed uh, um, to change his prosthesis, a new pair of prosthesis. Uh, I asked about his son, he told me, he's at school, he's doing quite well. But uh, I understood he wanted to tell me something. So I, I asked him, so what is that? He was uh, sweating, he was clearly embarrassed. And he was uh, standing in front of me, his uh, head down. He said, you, you have taught me to walk. Thank you very much. Now help me not to be a beggar anymore. That was the job. Um, my children are growing. I feel ashamed. I don't want them to be teased at school by the other students. I said, okay. I, I thought how much money I have in my pocket just to give him some money. It's the easiest way. He read my mind. And he said, I ask for a job. And then he added something I will never forget for the rest of my life. He said, I am a scrap of a man, but if you help me, I'm ready to do anything, even if I have to crawl on the ground. And then he sat down. I sat down too with the goosebumps everywhere. And uh, legless, with only one arm, illiterate, unskilled. What, what job for him? Uh, Najmuddin told me. Well, we have a vacancy in the carpentry shop. We, we can... What? I said, uh, stop. Uh, well, yeah, with, uh, um, we need to increase the production of feet. Uh, we need someone to employ someone to uh, glue and screw the sole of the, of the feet. We need to increase the production. Excuse me? I could not believe. And then he said, no, we can, we can, we can modify the, 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 the workbench, maybe to put a special stool, a special anvil, a special um, vice, and maybe an electrical screwdriver. So I said, listen, that's, it's insane. And it's even cruel to think of anything like this. That's a production line, and a very fast one. It's cruel to offer him a job knowing that is going to fail. But with Najmuddin, we cannot discuss. So, <laughs> the only things I could manage to, to obtain was a kind of a, a, yeah, compromise. Only one week. One week try, not a single day more. One week later, Mahmoud was the fastest in the production line. I told Najmuddin, that's a trick. <laughs> I can't believe it. The production was 20% up. It's a trick, it's a trick, I said. And then I asked for a verification. It was, it was true. The comment of Najmuddin was, uh, Mahmoud has something to prove. I understood that uh, I was wrong again. Mahmoud had looked taller. I remember him sitting behind the workbench, smiling. He was a new man, taller again. Of course, and I understood that what made him stand tall. Yeah, where the legs, yes, thank you very much. But as a first step, it was the dignity. He has regained his full dignity thanks to that job. 
So, of course, I understood, and then we started a new policy, a new policy completely different. And now we decided to employ as many disabled as possible to train them in any possible job. It became a, a policy of positive discrimination, we call it now. And, and you know what? It's good for everybody. Everybody benefits from that. Those employed, of course, because, because uh, they get a job and dignity. But also for the newcomers, there are 7,000 every year, people coming in for the first time. And you should see the face of these people when they realize that those assisting them are like them. Sometimes you see them, they look... Oh, and you see the face and then... And the surprise turns into, into hope. And it's easy for me as well to train someone who has already passed through the experience of disability. Poof, they learn much faster. The motivation, the empathy they can establish with the patient is completely different, completely. Scrap of men do not exist. People like Mahmoud are agents of change. And when you start changing, you, 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 you cannot stop. So, Employing people, yes, but also we started program projects of uh, microfinance, uh, education. Uh, and when you start, you cannot stop. So you do uh, vocational training, home education for those who cannot go to school. A physiotherapist can be done not only in the orthopedic center, but also in the houses of the people. There is always a better way to do things. Yeah, that's Najmuddin, the one with the white coat. A terrible Najmuddin is that one. I have learned a lot from people like Najmuddin, Mahmoud, Rafi. They are my teachers. I have a wish, a big wish, that this way of working, this way of thinking, is going to be implemented in other countries. There are plenty of countries at war, like Afghanistan. It is possible, and it is not difficult. All what we have to do, it's to, to listen to the people that we are supposed to assist to make them part of the decision-making process, and then, of course, to adapt. This is my, my big wish. Well, don't think that the changes in Afghanistan are over. Not at all. We are going on. Recently, we have just started a program, a sport program, basketball for wheelchair users. We transported the wheelchairs everywhere. We have several teams in many parts of Afghanistan. Uh, at the beginning, when, uh, when Najmuddin told me uh, we would like to start it, I hesitated. I said, no, you, you, you can imagine. I said, no, 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 we can't. And then I asked the usual question, is it a priority? Is it uh, really necessary? Well, now you should see me. I never miss a single training session. The night before a match, I'm very nervous. And, and uh, you should see me, I mean, uh, during the match, I shout, I, well, like a true Italian. <laughs> what next? What is going to be next, uh, next uh, change? Well, I don't know yet, but I'm sure that Najmuddin and his friends, they have already in mind. <laughs> that was my story. Thank you very much.